every so often I hear someone say that Windows is now a rolling release. And every time I hear this, I end up laughing a bit because it's really not. Like, it's less stable than back in the days of having service packs where you would have all of these updates come at one time. But I still think it's very far from being a rolling release, even though it does have a lot of rolling aspects. If you didn't see the video I did about rolling and stable Linux releases, which should be linked up on the corner there and in the description down below, what a rolling release would be would be an operating system that continually has updates being released. It rolls into those new updates and doesn't really have numbered versions. So if I have a version of the operating system from 2019 and from 2021, these are the same operating system, it's just the one from 2021 has more patches installed. And by not having a versioned release, they typically won't have an EOL date, otherwise known as an end of life date, where the operating system stops receiving updates. So when something is rolling, every aspect of the system is going to be updated, whether that be the user software, the kernel, the drivers, or anything else that you have installed. One of the things included in the rolling definition is updates to user software. But this is where Windows gets kind of weird and why applying these Linuxy models over to Windows doesn't always make a lot of sense. So traditionally, Windows has handled the release of third-party software by not handling it at all. If you want to download something on Windows, typically what you would do is you would go to the software's website and download the installer, or in some cases, just download an exe that runs the application. Nowadays, though, Microsoft does have a first-party app store, which I guess you could say serves the same job as a package manager would on a Linux distribution. And when you download something from this, if an update to the application comes out, that's not going to be held back by Microsoft. It's going to be coming out as soon as the update is available. So I guess you could call this aspect rolling, but because the first party app store still isn't the primary way for people to install software, I don't know whether you can even really talk about software releases in the case of Windows as a rolling release. Now this should be really obvious, but Windows does have major version releases. So we have Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, 10, 11, so on and so forth. And if you have, say, a Windows 7 system, you can't just go and take that 7 system, go and use, say, Windows Update, continually install updates, and just roll into Windows 11. Maybe internally at Microsoft that is something you can do, but at least with the users, that certainly isn't possible. So if you wanted to go use Windows 11 from Windows 7, that would require a complete operating system reinstall. While this process is fairly transparent nowadays, what it definitely isn't doing is gradually rolling software from one version of Windows into the next version. But even outside of major version releases, there are versioned minor releases as well. These are less obvious to the user, but if you start looking at things like Windows Gaming, you will start looking at things like, hey, do you want to run 21H1 or 20H2 or 2004 or 1909, all of these are different versions of Windows 10. Now, once again, if Windows Update is actually working properly, updating from one version to another is basically seamless. But unlike going from a major version to another major version, this does not require a complete reinstall. This is just basically coming through Windows Update and just takes you up to the next version without really having to do anything on the user's part. Now, Windows does actually have a rolling aspect as well. So the way that Microsoft releases updates for Windows 10, it might change with Windows 11, but right now it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, is they have feature updates and then quality updates. So a feature update is going to be one of these new minor releases. These actually change the version number of the operating system. So I would call those a new stable update coming to Windows 10. But in the case of the quality updates, they come considerably more frequently. There'll be things like security patches and other things to make sure the operating system is relatively safe to run. And while these don't come as individual programs, they come as a big bulk of updates, I still would call these 
rolling in a sense because they don't change the version number of the operating system but they are released as a batch update so it's this weird in-between state where it's hard to really categorize it. Now for both the major and minor releases of Windows there is going to be a very very clear end of life date so in the case of Windows 7 that was back in January of 2020. In the case of Windows 10 that is going to be October of 2025. In the case of my minor update, depending on how often the minor updates are actually coming out, that might be every six months or every year. It really does entirely depend though. But this is where the categorization really falls apart. So if we take something like Windows 7, which is no longer receiving first party updates via Windows Update for things like security patches and other stuff like that, that is end of life. But because Windows mainly handles its third-party software distribution by not and by letting developers do what they want, there's nothing stopping you going and downloading something like, say, I don't know, Discord. If Discord is still supported on Windows 7, and then that's still being updated, so... While it's end of life, there's no reason why you can't physically keep using it. End of life in the case of Windows really only refers to first party updates. It's entirely up to developers if they want to keep supporting Windows 7 and keep actually releasing updates for that system. So I don't know how you would properly categorize this. I don't think the Linux style of distribution models really applies to Windows, but if we're going to apply one, I think the only one that really makes sense is semi-rolling. And I'm not the only one who's actually come to this conclusion. If you look up people actually discussing this, they'll basically be describing what a semi-rolling release is, while not really being sure whether it's a rolling or a stable release. There's a term for that that exists, and that term is semi-rolling. We have some aspects of the system which are stable. Things like core system software is going to change with the feature updates, and then there are major releases of the operating system, 7, 8, 10, 11, so on and so forth, and then some aspects that do roll. Things like the quality updates with Windows Update, and then third-party software releases, not just from, like, you know, random websites out there, but if we just talk about the first party store, those updates do roll. Now, you might be curious about Windows LTSC. That is the Windows long-term service channel. Now, I don't think that really anything actually changes here because even if you are running the LTS channel, you still do get these feature updates and you do get quality updates. It's just they'll come at a much, much slower pace because it's the long-term service channel, but eventually you will still see the exact same things that you see with the mainstream version of Windows as well. And even if you didn't get any Windows updates on LTSC, you still do get those rolling user software updates, so I still think calling it a semi-rolling release does make sense if we're using this Linuxy terminology. And I think the exact same things apply over on macOS as well. While the way they do their release model is a little bit different, I think that if I just took everything I said about Windows and replaced it with macOS, this would basically be the exact same video and I would come to the exact same conclusion. If we're going to be applying these Linuxy release models to other operating systems, I think it only makes sense to call macOS a semi-rolling release. Ultimately, though, this is just an argument about semantics, and I'm sure you can justify it being a stable release or being a full rolling release, but from where I'm standing, I think the only way I can look at it is as a semi-rolling release, but if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comment section down below. So that's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe Sully Berape, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and then this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>